Hey, you, all in good morning. Carpetbagger here, coming to you live from the south. More specifically, we're in the great state of Florida. And uh, we're currently at the I-4, the I-4 westbound rest area. And I was resting because it has been the, uh, the past 48 hours, the past two days have been quite, quite an adventure. I uh, went to the uh, the final day of the Country Bear Jamboree, an amazing, uh, amazing night there at Magic Kingdom. We uh, got to the park, got to the park probably about one or two, you know, watch, was able to watch the show I think seven times <laughs> over uh, over that evening. And ended up staying late. The, the 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 ride broke down. We all hoped that they'd be able to get it up and running for one more show. Sadly, that did not happen. And uh, ended up waiting in line probably over two hours for the last show that was eventually uh, eventually canceled. And uh, of course, did not you know did not get out of the park until midnight. You know, once I got back to the room, had to get everything edited. I think it was about uh, about 3:30. About 3:30, I finally got to sleep. And um, I, I was determined the next day I wanted to do Gasparilla. I wanted to do the Gasparilla Pirate Festival, something I've always wanted to do. And um, I only got, I think, two and a half hours of sleep. I uh, went to bed at 3.30, uh, woke up at six. I think that's two and a half hours. <laughs> uh, I was determined, I was scared. I was like, and you know, I'd, I'd gone to Tampa before Went to the Oddities and Curiosities Expo at the Convention Center and a lot of trouble finding parking. I think both times I've gone there, parking has been an issue. So I'm like, I need to get, this is the biggest event in Tampa. I need to get there early. So I, I drove in. I think I got, I think I got to Tampa about eight and um, got there a little too early. Ended up uh, getting to the parking garage. It was almost empty. I'm like, man. What was I thinking? On two and a half hours of sleep, I got up early to try to beat the crowd, and I beat it far, far, far too early. Um, yeah, I ended up waiting like four or five hours, like four or five hours for the pirate ship to show up. When I got there, it was so, I got there so early, like they hadn't even set up like the security perimeter completely yet when I, when I got in there. Um, then I ended up waiting. I'm, you know, I was uh, glad I did it. It's, it's uh, you know, one of those things that had been on my list for a while. That I was like, I'm here. I'm in Florida. I just got to do it. I had the country bears the night before, but I'm like, I'm gonna push through. I'm gonna, I'm gonna check these things both off of uh, of my list. And um, man, it was a lot. I ended up so two, two and a half hours of sleep. Ended up going over there, Gasparilla way crazier, way, way crazier than um, I had ever imagined. It was like a, a combination of uh, spring break and Mardi Gras all mixed into one. A lot of very young people having a very good time, um, drinking copious amounts of, uh, of alcohol. And uh, I, I've, I've got a little more information since then. Some people have left comments. Apparently, and I may do this, I may go back for this. Apparently they call it the Kids Parade, which apparently is the same parade. It is the same parade that runs uh, on, uh, on the main Gasparilla Day, but it's a family, a family environment. So there, there's not hordes of people drinking. I think the crowds are lighter and you can enjoy the parade float. So I may come back, I may redo, I may come back to Gasparilla, but I'll probably go to the kids parade in order to uh, see the floats better. Because yesterday there was no seeing, no seeing those floats. There was, it was, I mean, I could see them. I just could not get close, could not get a good look. The crowd was ludicrous and uh, could hardly even get close enough to get a good view of the parade. Eventually I was like, I, with my endurance running out, having been there, having stayed out late the night before at Country Bears and having um, gotten up super early, um, I, I, I kind of called it. I, I didn't want to just not go see the parade. So I, I, I stuck around, saw a few floats, and then I'm like, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta move on. But one of the reasons I had to move on 
was because last night, uh, Jen had actually come into town uh, the night before, and we had gotten tickets to the Royal Rumble. Originally, I decided I was gonna leave Florida. I wanted to see Jen. I wanted to watch the Royal Rumble with Jen. Um, for those of you who don't know, that's WWE. It's a wrestling event. I uh, wanted to watch uh, Royal Rumble with Jen. Um, so I was like, I'm gonna drive, I'm gonna get back. I'm gonna drive home and uh, make it back so we can watch uh, Royal Rumble together at the house. But then I, I got to thinking about it. I'm like, you know what? This is silly. The Royal Rumble is just happening over in Tampa. I'm currently staying in, uh, you know, like the Kissimmee area. I still stay with Adam for a few nights. And um, I was like, why should I drive back to North Carolina to see the Royal Rumble when the Royal Rumble's happening here? So I, I told Jen, I'm like, why don't you come down here and uh, we can see the Royal Rumble. And it's been, that was the first WWE event I had been to since, I think WrestleMania 13. The last uh, WrestleMania I saw was where Steve Austin and Bret Hart had their famous, uh, their famous submission match. The main event was um, Undertaker versus Psycho Sid. That was the last WWE event I went to. Um, I'd been to wrestling events, but uh, not a WWE event. Went to, last summer, me and Jen went to Forbidden Door in Toronto, the AEW event. So this is my first time being back to a WWE event. And um, I made the decision originally, I was gonna maybe vlog a little bit of it and include it, um, include it in this, on this channel, but I was so tired from Gasparilla and I figured, this story has been told. The story of Gasparilla has been told. It had to be getting a bit of the dead. I'm gonna make this the video, and I'm gonna put the camera down, and I'm just gonna enjoy this show. I figured, um, you know, I could have vlogged it, and I don't really know. I've never tried to vlog a WWE event before. Um, I don't know how many of you are interested in that. I mean, leave a comment in the comment section. If I were to, uh, if I were to go to a, to a wrestling event, to an AEW or WWE event, in the future. Would you guys be interested in me including that in the channel, including a vlog? Um, I don't think they allow you to bring like um, my video camera in, but I may be able to, to film it on my phone. I think that's, I think they're okay with that. You see people on TV with their phones filming. So I think that's okay. Um, so uh, yeah, if you're interested in that, let me know. But I kind of just, all the factors, uh, how busy I'd been, um, just not wanting to, not wanting to worry about getting the right footage, trying, not really knowing even how to how I would vlog a WWE show. You know, you can't don't just point the can't I can't just point the camera at the ring and and show that. I mean, that, that that's pointless. It's just be worse footage of what you would already see on uh, on TV. But you know, you get your reactions and show your experience and show the um, stadium. But I was like, you know what? It's been a long two days. Country Bears. Gasparilla, two very extensive days. I'm like, I just want to relax. I want to hang out with Jen. I want to enjoy the Royal Rumble, enjoy the show, and it was a it was, it was a lot of fun. Um, you know, seeing wrestling in person. I've only been, like I said, not been to a ton of wrestling shows um, from you know national companies. I've been to some been to more independent wrestling shows in the past uh, so many years, but. Um, just part of that, you know, you don't necessarily see the ring very well. We were on the, we had good seats. We were on the floor, um, not front row, but you know, on the floor, but a bit back. And, um, you know, part of it is just the energy of the building. You hear the crowd and being in, it was Tropicana Stadium. It's like a baseball stadium. So you look around and see just the mass of humanity. I think there was, what was, I, I'm trying to remember the attendance, the attendance last night. They said there was a couple hundred thousand people there, but I don't. Does that sound right? Or does that sound too many? I don't know. No, it was not hundred thousand. That's crazy. Hundred thousand. I think there was like no. I think it was fifty thousand. I think it was fifty thousand, maybe, people there. Is that right? I don't know. I'll have to check. But it was a lot of people. My numbers are all off. I think there's a lot of people. And just the energy, you get people, uh, you know, the chance, the crowd, the people into it, people having a good time, just soaking that in and appreciating it. That's kind of what uh, the event is for me. And I was like wondering, like, maybe, I'd be going to, maybe I'll go to more sporting events. Maybe I'll go see a baseball game or a football game. You know, I don't have any interest in those sports, but part of the experience is just the arena, the crowd, the people. It, it's fun. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun. So... 
to be keeping track, I uh, went to Country Bears, got two and a half hours of sleep, went to Gasparilla, and then, uh, that which was just crazy, drunken party. I didn't drink anything, but it was a crazy drunken party. And um, then immediately after that, went to Royal Rumble. We didn't, the, the show didn't end until midnight. Me and Jen got something to eat, got back to uh, staying in Kissimmee, got back to Kissimmee, and um, it was, I forget what time we got in, but by the time I got the video edited last night, the time I got the, my Gasparilla video edited, it was, I think, 5.30 in the morning. So I went to sleep. I'm running on, I think, about eight hours of sleep between, between the two days now, and I'm like, man, I don't have a lot of energy today. I am tired. I am seriously not even thinking straight. As you see when I when I said that there was 200,000 people at Tropicana Stadium, which is clearly clearly not the case. Um, yeah, I'm tired. I'm exhausted. I'm feeling feeling tired, feeling worn out. So I figured today we would do uh, do something a little mellow. We bring things bring things down a notch on this channel. No Royal Rumble, no Gasparilla, no Country Bear Jamboree today. Um, what I like to do in Florida, because I tend to overextend myself in Florida. The theme parks tend to go hard in the theme parks, go hard with filming. And um, I decided the one thing here in Florida that helps me chill out, that helps me relax are uh, manatees. And it is manatee season. Um, so I wanted to, uh, dr driving back out towards Tampa, I wanted to uh, check out some manatees today. Now, Jen, Jen wasn't feeling well. Uh, you know, we were out crazy last night, so she decided she was gonna rest uh, at the hotel today. But um, I wanted to get out at least a little bit, and uh, we're gonna head out uh, in the direction of Tampa, and we're gonna seek out some manatees. So please follow me. And we have landed in Apollo Beach, Florida. Now, I said I wanted to find some manatees today. And uh, there's a couple different places I like to go to see manatees. I like going to uh, Blue Spring State Park. Uh, it's a beautiful place to see manatees. But this here is uh, one of the more interesting spots which you can see manatees. This is the Teco Power Station. That's the Tampa Electric Company. And uh, there's a power station here that generates power and it actually heats up the surrounding water uh, from the power plant. Um, and because of this, it has become a place where manatees travel to, a mecca for manatees. Manatees, when it gets a little colder in the winter months, they like to seek out warmer water to bask in. And so in the winter months, a large number of manatees tend to congregate here at the Teco power plant. Now, um, I visited here, last time I visited here, I came in November, and we did not see a single manatee. I was very, uh, very sad, very disappointed, but I figured with the cold weather that we're having and the fact that we are right in the middle of manatee season, we probably have a pretty good odds of seeing some manatees here today. And like I said, it's been a, it's been a intense, 48 hours, I want to do something a little more low-key, and it relaxes me to watch manatees basking in the water. So let's uh, see if we got some manatees here at the power plant today. There's a lot of cars here, it's hopping here today, so uh, we may be in luck, we may get a spot of manatee or two. See the manatee-shaped mailbox here. He's asking for some contributions. It is free to attend the uh, Manatee Viewing Center, so they're just asking to throw a few dollars to help out the manatees. Some fun comic foregrounds here.
out here looking from the heavens above, above the swampland here, enjoying all of nature. <laughs> See this blue metal manatee here swimming underneath those two smokestacks. Now we walk out onto this uh, kind of catwalk over the water here. Hopefully there'll be some basking manatees in the water. Okay, let's see. This is the power plant there. That's what warms up the water here. It encourages manatees to, uh, to winter here. And I'm not seeing a whole bunch right off the bat, but uh, we'll see. There'll be some people congregating over here. Maybe there are more on this side today. Okay, spotted one there in the water. And oh, actually, look over here. Water's a little wavy, so it's hard to see, but there is like quite a few, maybe 10 manatees there under the water. Oh, I just saw a nose poke up. Oh yeah, there you go, see the nose poking up there. Yeah, maybe a little more difficult to see them today, just because there's a little bit of wind causing the wave, but it's just boom, 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 boom. Yeah, they're just like, there's probably 20 something manatees right there under the water. Zoom in there. Oh yeah. Yeah, you can see them. Stick their little backs up, their noses. Just kind of slurking right below the surface. That one right in the center there. It's like a back covered in barnacles. They're very barnacly back. Oh yeah, see them coming up for air there. A lot of times when they poke their nose up, you can actually hear the little snort they do. It's like a herd of manatees. Like a herd of cattle. It's a herd of sea cows. It's the South Shore Cafe, so you can grab a little, uh, little snack. And sit here on these picnic tables, enjoy your snack while overlooking the manatee. Head in here for some fun and fact. You know, fun can definitely uh, be factual sometimes. Then we'll get a closer peek at a manatee. Have a, uh, a model right there. You can actually get a view of what he looks like, both above and below the water there. This is pretty fun. You can experience manatee breath. Push the button on the manatee's nose to smell its breath. So the button's there. Let's get down here. Musty. Musty breath. Breath kind of smells, I don't know, I'd say, not in an unpleasant way, but kind of smells like like an old basement. I wonder if they sell, I wonder if Froggy's Fog, or it makes sense for haunted houses, sells manatee breath. It's one of their, one of their scents. Check out this manatee skeleton here. And uh, down here they put some, uh, some bones so you can observe the skeleton there and you can play with its bones. There's a manatee skull, that's super spooky there. <laughs> Here's the manatee neck bones there. And uh-oh, looks like someone has stolen the manatee's rib bone. You can be a uh, manatee chiropractor here. Here it talks about the the boat strikes. And one of the main main issues manatees face is they they lurk just under the water, right where the uh, motors of, of motor boats. So they're just like chilling out here, and then this boat will come by and slash up their backs. A lot of times you see manatees, they are covered in scars for being hit by so many boats. Really, really sad. Here they encourage boaters to get a prop guard, and it's a plastic thing to put around your propeller to help protect the manatees from the blades. 
Here we can see how, how do you measure up to a manatee. We have the uh, West Indian manatee here on the wall. You can see how much taller the manatee is than, uh, than me. All right, let's see here. About two inches, two inches under six feet tall, so definitely do not, do not uh, measure up to a manatee. I will, I will, I will never measure up. Check back over here. It looks like people are looking straight down there, so maybe we got a manatee that's um, that become a little bit closer. Yeah, you can see, kind of see the whole shape there of the. Uh, of the manatee and you can see through the water he's got a little scar there on his back that's from the uh, boat motors let's see the little guy there taking a breath see the manatee there covered in uh, other manatees of uh, different colors. I should call that a manatee of a different color. The manatee gift shop here. This uh, happy manatee here is inviting us in. Does he like have a little bit of hair there on top of its head? Right, so let's uh, see what they sell at the manatee store. Yeah, every manatee related item you could possibly want in here. There's a manatee nail file. Got a manatee on a stick. Apparently here at the uh, Manatee Viewing Center, they refer to manatees as floaty potatoes. Floaty potatoes. Yeah, see here? Save the floaty potato. Does anyone else, uh, does anyone else call manatees that? <laughs> Leave a comment in the comment section. I guess they're called either floaty potatoes or chubby mermaids. And actually they say that uh, some of the early sightings that sailors made of mermaids may have actually been manatees. Some floppy manatees there. Well, they're warmies. I guess you put that in the microwave. So you have a nice, nice hot manatee. There's a clock there where you can tell what uh, mana time it is. The different uh, snow globes there. Look at that, they got the blue sparkles. There's a thermometer. And uh, oh, there's the, the hourglass there. All right, my pretty. Well, I think for my souvenir, we'll head over here where they have a couple of Manatee Viewing Center mold a Maddox. Of course, get a, uh, a manatee made there. They've had the manatee mold for some time, but uh, this is actually the, the newer one here. I think they've switched this out recently. They have added a shark mold. Let's uh, let's get one of each. All right, we've cranked up the uh, shark mold. I'll get the manatee fired up here as well. Let me swipe my card. Of course, I can't show my uh, my credit card here on uh, on camera. Okay, got the sharks going, and here comes the manatee. All right, we got them both uh, cooking at once here. You can hear the vibrations, all the uh, magic happening there. Let's see, oh, there we go. There's our shark. That's gonna be pretty steamy hot. Oh, that's nice. I like that. That's uh, like that bright blue colors on uh, on that shark there. All right, let's check on our check on our manatee. Oh yeah, that our manatee's ready as well. There we go. Got a pretty cool, uh, pretty cool pair of moldomatics there. The manatee does say uh, Teco Manatee Viewing Center there on the bottom. So very nice. Decided to add these uh, to my collection. All right, gonna head over here to Cow Nose Cove where we can pet a ray. And here's how you touch a ray. 
This is the no touch zone right there, down at spine and tail. The uh, wings there, or fins, is where you touch. So you more like just give them kind of a high five as they go by. Well, here comes one. That's two fingers there. And, oh, no, okay. Those ones didn't want any high fives. Oh, there we go. It's flapping there along the coast. Oh, look, 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 look. Oh, hey, hey there. They're waving as they go by. Oh, 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 denied. Oh, here they come. There we go. High five, buddy. Nice. So feel a little, little more relaxed already. I always love uh, watching manatees, watching sea creatures, sea life. Always kind of puts me in a uh, in a relaxed state. Now this is a great place to see manatees, and I really love like how interesting it is and how how you know a power plant can actually manage to to be helpful to the environment to give like a sanctuary to uh, to the manatees. Um, I do think as far as like best places to view manatees, there's a lot of manatees here, but the water is a little darker here, so I think that they don't pop out as much. Um, I think Blue Springs has, uh, is a lot more clear. The water's kind of like, it's still and crystal clear, so you get a better view of the manatees, and I haven't been to every like manatee hotspot, which is maybe something I should I should do make a point of uh, in the winter visiting all the manatee hotspots. But um, look at that, yeah, the water here not as clear as some of the other places, but you still get a, a whole mass of manatees, and of course they have uh, you know the fun museum. They have the Moldomatics, the only manatee viewing area with uh, with Moldomatics. This may be this may be the only place that you can get. The manatee mold. I'm trying to th th think if this was the same mold. I think Universal may have used this for their uh, original Jaws mold. They had a custom mold made, but I think this was in their Jaws mold. I could be wrong. This could be a different mold. I'll have to check when I get uh, back to the bunker. But I really love that that shark there. It's got some uh, beautiful, beautiful color to it, and uh, yeah, always. always Good to add to my collection again. I have the manatee, but I don't know. I just wanted another one. This one does have a small, a small hole there. Sometimes, if if a lot of people are cranking them up and the machine gets hot, it can it can affect them. These are old school machines. It's old school technology. So sometimes you know you get varying results, and that's part of the fun of getting the molds is uh, seeing if you get little little differences, little changes in. Uh, in the in the molds that come out, but um, yeah, I'm really got I'm really I'm really tired. Um, so I think I'm gonna drive back to the hotel. I may even take a nap when I get back uh, to my hotel room. I also got like I don't know if you guys can see I got a little sunburned yesterday. It's um something I, I end up happening more often than it should as I get I get sunburned. I uh, in the summer when I'm like going to the amusement parks, I always think to put on the sunscreen, but. Uh, I don't know. It's 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 uh it's January. I didn't uh, wasn't even really thinking about sunscreen. And then when I went to Gasparilla, and it was it was really hot. I think it was 80. It was bright and sunny. It's kind of unpredictable here, in Florida in January. A little cooler today. It was nice here at uh, at the Manatee Viewing Center. But thank you guys so much. I appreciate you following uh, my adventures from day to day. And and uh, you know, occasionally we're gonna do a day where it's a little little scaled back. Um, I think that was about all the energy I had to do was to stop and see the manatees. No amusement parks, no uh, no Disney today. I thought about going to Disney, then I was like, ah, that would that would that would put an end to me. That's that's too much. The amusement parks are a lot of fun, but uh, they they're very 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 exhausting, especially if you do like a do like a uh, a ten hour country bear marathon. But um, thank you guys so much. Uh, it really means a lot to me. Um, that you, that, that you do you do watch these videos um, that you guys stick with me and, and, and that means a lot um, if you do like these videos though consider subscribing it does help me out I'm trying to uh, see if someday I can get to half a million subscribers if you would like to help uh, help out the channel in other ways 
consider contributing to Patreon. Three dollars or more gets you a postcard once a month from me to you. Also doing personalized messages in Cameo. And uh, information for all those things in the description of this video and all those things. I'll keep this train on the track, this manatee floating right below the surface, and this dirigible in the air. Till next time, my friends. This one's in the bag.